be a little loud. Are we good? All right. Closer? All right. So I want to thank all of you so much for coming out and thank you to Ruth and the organizers, the people who marched down from the university for making this happen. This wouldn't happen without you. Um, and since I think we've all gotten a little closer, I have a bit of a confession to make to you guys. You know, um, from the moment Ruth reached out about speaking at this event, I felt too small to do this. I felt like whatever words I had and whatever message there was to share wasn't equal to the crisis and to what we face. But when I saw that march of students coming down this street, I did not feel too small anymore. But in the meantime, while I did feel a little bit too small, I asked my friend Drew about this speech. I shared with her that I was nervous. And Drew said something that really stopped me in my tracks. Drew's in the audience today and has no idea this is coming. So uh, I apologize to Drew. But Drew, Drew told me, you know, it's weird to be around at this point in time. It's now or never, and we have to decide which way this whole thing is going to go. We have to pick a side. And when, when Drew said that, it, it really struck home for me. I think she's right. We are here at an interesting time, and I don't mean just here, like, we are here at an interesting time, and we do have to pick that side. Now, in, in most of my activism, I try to be an optimistic person, but with climate activism, it gets more and more difficult. The more you look out, it's, it's one crisis after another. It's burning rainforests and floods. It's hundred year storms that come sooner and sooner. And it's ice caps shrinking faster than we ever thought would be possible. All of this comes out, it's digested into a 24 hour news cycle. It goes viral. And then somehow it's all gone. It's just replaced by that endless scrolling of our phone and more and more silence. And it's a dizzying, sinking feeling to see that happen that I'm sure many of you guys here know all too well. You know that feeling that it's just happening and happening and happening. But in that feeling, I try to you know, come back around to what Drew said, where it's not too late. We still have, we can still decide which way this whole thing is gonna go. And we're here at such an important time. So there's two things within that that I really want to impart to you guys and then I'll, I'll get off here, I promise. But the first one is that we have an election coming up in 30 days. We have 30 days, that is less than a full calendar month to make that change. And here in Guelph, we are uniquely situated to do it. We can send an MP to Parliament who knows the real work that has to be done on climate action. We can do that, but it can't be done without all the people here showing up to vote, knocking on doors, fighting for a better future, and talking to the people for whom it matters. It's if everyone can take a moment and look at the people beside you and you don't have to talk about it, but make a little bit of a, a moral agreement that you will show up and vote, you will volunteer. This might be the most important election in a generation. And if everybody here, if all these faces are at campaign offices and polling booths, there is no way we can lose. There's not a chance that that can happen. The second, the second thing I want to talk about has some unique Guelph roots too. Um, we are a leading agricultural school in a leading agricultural city, and we have an opportunity to make a huge impact on the food system from right here. The people in this very crowd can do it. We can push ourselves and our world and our food systems towards a plant-based diet, one that treads more lightly upon the earth. Yeah! Because the impact of eating animals on the planet is hard to overstate. For the, for the plant-based eaters in the room, these will be familiar statistics, but I'd really like to say them for everyone else, you know. According to the UN Food and Agriculture Office, animal agriculture is responsible for 18% of global greenhouse gas emissions. That's a fifth. That is huge. And to make that even worse, 
Methane, which comes a lot from cattle, is 86 times more potent than other greenhouse gases. It is a bomb drop of a climate change issue. And even without fossil fuels, we will exceed our 556 gigaton CO2 limit by 2030 just from eating animals. Whichever way you look at it, not eating animals is one of the best ways to reduce our personal environmental footprint. And from the chalk art and the sign, I can see you guys know that. Right. It's also, it's also come up that personal change in a moment of crisis like this often is not enough. And that's where I think our position here in Guelph is so valuable. We are here at the Agriculture University, the Agriculture City, OMAFRA, Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. I'm sure people in the crowd work there. We can make that change on a systemic level and we can really create a better, fairer food system. I believe that we can make this happen and that we can do it soon, especially looking at the use of fossil fuels as a comparison. Almost our whole transportation system relies on greenhouse gas emissions and oil products. I mean, how many of them use that to get here today? It's part of our economy. Our supply chains, our products are based in plastic. So many of us are wearing plastic. But if everybody here cut down the number of like Big Macs that we eat, not that much would change and we would make a huge difference for the footprint of even this area. So, yeah. So just before closing off and passing this stage over to the next speaker, I'd like to circle around to that comment from my friend Drew. We really do live in an interesting time. It really is now or never. But we can still decide which way this is going to go. We just have to pick a side. Thank you so much. Thank you.